Hi everybody, this is Ivadi and X from The Candid Frame. Before we begin, I want to talk about a couple events that are coming up in November. I am going to be in San Antonio for 4x5 Photo Fest, which is a, an event that caters to a lot of photographers in the San Antonio, Texas region. And uh, it's an amazing event that's going to have a lot of different photographers gathering together, doing portfolio reviews, panel discussions, and I'll be conducting two interviews with two local photographers uh, at that event. So if you are in the area and you have the time, come on down, watch two live tapings of The Candid Frame, and uh, say hello. And in December, I'll also be at the Miami Street Photography Festival. And uh, there I'm going to be conducting... Uh, a master class, a workshop on street photography for, for one day, as well as conducting some interviews for the show, which though they aren't going to be live, will soon be released on the uh, Candid Frame uh, podcast. So if you want to register for that master class, go to MiamiStreetPhotographyFestival.org and uh, sign up. And links for both events are going to be in the notes below. All right, the thing I wanted to talk about today was part of my visual workflow, is, is what I call it. It's this process through which I find subject matter to photograph. I, I don't like just going out there and just absently snapping pictures. I used to do that, especially when I was struggling. I would be walking down the street and I would just raise the camera to my eye and just take pictures of people walking by as if that was going to produce an interesting photograph. Uh, more often than not, it didn't produce anything because I wasn't carefully seeing anything. I was just going through the mechanical action of pressing the button and pointing it at something and hoping that somehow I was going to make a good photograph. And as I've talked about in previous videos, one of the things that I do is I look for light and shadow. And that usually takes me on the path of being able to discover uh, interesting subject matter, interesting scenes that I can photograph. But the second thing after light and shadow, which I want to talk about today, is paying attention to line and shape. Because uh, immediately after light and shadow, the observation of line and shape helps to serve as the building blocks for a composition, regardless of whether or not I've, I've seen somebody that I want to photograph, or even if I'm going to include a person in, in the frame. By observing line and shape, I can start getting a sense of what my stage is going to be, the setting in which I'm going to photograph. And then I can start thinking about, well, how is this frame going to look? And usually by doing that and paying attention to light and shadow, I'm well on my way to making an interesting photograph. So I, I pulled three images that illustrate that point. All right, here we have a shot by Ye Min. This was made with a Fuji uh, X-T2 at 160th of a second, 5.6, ISO 3200. So here's a kid playing on a slide, and obviously color is a big part of this image, but I want you to pay attention to the lines and the shapes that, are, uh, that pervade this entire shot. Because besides the color and the gesture of the feet, uh, as, the, as the young boy or girl is coming down the slide, you have these wonderful shapes. You have this wonderful curving line that sort of leads up to the top uh, and to the two feet in the frame. But we also have a lot of sort of vertical lines that pervade the shot and some horizontal lines. And then there are these curved shapes that repeat throughout the frame. And as I've talked about in previous videos, the, repeatings, uh, the repeating of shape and line, um, these, these graphics, help sort of reinforce the visual weight of an image for me. Um, I love the repetition of, of, of pattern, uh, the repetition of line. There's something that really draws me visually into a scene when I, when I see that. And in this particular case, it's a combination of the lines and the shapes, the color, and then, of course, the, the gesture. The light here isn't particularly uh, important because the light itself is fairly soft and diffused. And though you do have some shadow here, um, they're not as pronounced as if, if the scene had been shot under direct sunlight, where you would really have some very strong light and shadow. And as, if you've seen some of my pictures, you'll see that I'm often gravitating to scenes that have a very hard light or very strong light and shadow. But when that's not happening, which can be often the case during this time of year, 
um, when the light is very diffused and soft, I have to rely more on line and shape to help build my compositions because I don't have sort of the, you know, the, the line and the light and shadow that I'm normally dependent on in order to start the building blocks of a good picture. And Ye does a great job here in terms of using that line and shape to make an interesting shot. And of course, the gesture of the feet is really critical to this image. But imagine this scene as just a, a, a scene that you come upon where you just see the line and shape and you can already see that you have the time and the opportunity to really think about how you want to compose this image. Uh, if you know that kids are going to come down the slide, you have the opportunity to really think about something beyond simply capturing the kid coming down the slide. You can start thinking about, okay, how do I want this composition to look? Do I compose it horizontally? Do I do it vertically? How much of the slide do I include? How much of the blue elements and the yellow elements and the orange elements uh, in the background do I include in the frame? How much of the grass do I include? How much of the sand do I include? By looking at line and shape, first and foremost, you can start refining what your overall composition is. And once you've settled on that, you can wait for the gesture, in this case, the kid coming down the slide. Because if you just see a scene and you just try and grab it, the impulse is just to make the shot in the moment that you experience it. But you're not really carefully evaluating the frame. And more often than not, than not you'll discover that you made a shot that just didn't work because there were elements in the frame that you didn't see at the moment that you made the photograph. But by paying attention to line and shape, first and foremost, you're able to make those choices. Make your final decision in terms of what your composition is going to look like, and then you can just wait for the anticipated gesture to come in and complete the shot. Now here we have a shot by Omri Schomer. This was made with a Sony RX100 Mark II, shot at 1 800th of a second, F8 ISO 800. So here we have that light and shadow that I talked about that wasn't present in the first image. In this shot, the shape and the lines are created by the passing of light through these slats um, uh, that are above and the shafts of light that are created against this wall. But there are also these repeating lines and shapes by the created by the windows, by the architecture of, of the building that this person is walking across, as well as the blinds that are present there. But you can see here, besides the light and the shadow, how important the lines and the shapes are to the overall feel of the image. And this is the kind of scene I'm always very excited to discover because I know that the bones are really strong here. Uh, even without seeing someone enter the frame, I know that if th there's enough foot traffic, someone eventually is going to come into the frame to help sort of complete the shot and to give me someone who will serve as another graphic element to the shot uh, that will provide a sense of scale, but will also give me the flourish and the gesture that I'm often looking for to make the shot interesting. Because graphically, the shot is really strong because of the light, the shadow, the shapes, and the lines. But it's nothing more than a still life until you have someone come into the, into the scene to help sort of complete it. But again, like the previous shot, when you find a scene like this, you have a lot of time to be able to kind of figure out, well, how do I want to compose this shot? And in, in this case, how do I want to expose for this shot? Because one of the challenges that you face here is because shadow is such an, a, a big part of the scene, the camera's meter, in most cameras, tends to want to open up the shadows in order to provide you more detail in that shadow area. And what Omri obviously did here is he biased the exposure for the highlights, for those bright areas of the frame, which he could have done either by exposing manually, by setting his shutter speed, his uh, ISO and his aperture manually, or by using the exposure compensation dial and underexposing by minus one stop, for example. In that way, you're allowing the shadows to go completely black with no detail in the shadows and allowing the emphasis to be on the highlights. And then finally, you just wait for someone to come into the frame. And the trick here is not just to wait for just anybody to come into the frame. You also need to have the right subject and you need to have the right gesture, which is usually going to be incumbent on your timing. So here we have the guy walking into the frame and his head and his shoulders and his left hand are exposed in this area of highlight, which is really, really critical because had he been positioned here, 
uh, his head and his hand, uh, the detail, the shape, the outline of those things would have been completely lost to shadow. So of critical concern here is getting the timing right, which you have plenty of time to do if you have enough foot traffic in there. You'll, you'll make shots of subjects that you know won't actually work for the shot. You know that because of the way they look or because there's a cluster of people that you know, the, the shot's going to be a wash, but that's not particularly important. What you're trying to do as people are walking through is try to anticipate the moment that the subject is going to be in the right spot and when you depress the shutter release button to make the shot. Um, because you have to anticipate that millisecond before the subject actually enters the spot that you consider ideal for the composition. And you have to make those shots that don't work in order to get your timing right. And once you do that, it's just a moment of waiting and anticipation, and then when you see your subject coming in from the right or the left, um, knowing the spot that they need to be, and then right before they're in that spot, pressing the button and making your, making your capture, which uh, Omri here did, did beautifully. So here we have a shot by IRQ506. No XF data on this, uh, on this image. So here we have a scene where we have these very strong graphic lines created by the crosswalk. We have the manhole cover. We have shadows that are, are appearing uh, in the street itself. There's a line, lot of line and shape in this scene. And this, again, is the kind of scene that I often gravitate to. If you look at my Instagram feed, you'll see a lot of images that I've made in crosswalks where I try to take advantage of lines very similar to this. But this is a scene that you can see and you immediately know the potential for a photograph. And again, you see the line, you see the shape, you see how the light is hitting the scene. Uh, this, this scene is obviously underexposed purposely uh, by the photographer because it, like the previous shots, it's emphasizing the highlights and allowing the shadows to go to black. Uh, that's a very purposeful choice. And when you observe a scene like this, even before some, someone has entered the frame, you have the grace of time to be able to figure out not only your composition, but how you want to expose the scene. Because one of the things about photography, even though the metering systems of today's cameras are, are amazing and they do a great job in giving us you know, a decent exposure, the, the most accurate exposure isn't always the best exposure. Uh, there are a lot of times where the exposure that the camera's metering, uh, camera's meter is suggesting to me is not going to fit the vision that I have uh, in my mind for the scene. And in which case, I will often use exposure compensation to purposely underexpose the image by two thirds of a stop or a stop in order to get that look where I'm biasing the highlights and letting the shadows go to black. And the photographer here, obviously, uh, at least to my eye, did that. So here you have the opportunity to not only refine the composition, but also bias the exposure in a way that produces a really interesting moody graphic shot. But then you have the foundation, right? You, have, you set the stage for the scene. And at that point, it's like, okay, can I include something else in the frame? And many times what I've often relied on is people walking through the crosswalks. And so I'll get their feet and their legs in the frame. I may get their whole body sometimes. I may render them a silhouette or allow some of the light to illuminate some article of clothing that might have a saturated color like red or green or blue or something along those lines. But this photographer does something interesting where they have a subject that's passing in front of the camera about to cross into the crosswalk to actually obstruct a good portion of the frame rendering, rendering them in silhouette, which I think is a great, a great choice. Because, because of the way the light is hitting the ground, you basically create this backlit scene in which this person's profile, their nose, their lips, their chin, their shoulders, their chest, uh, is perfectly outlined by the background. And on top of that, you have all these great lines that are leading us to that person in the frame. And you have that point of, of high contrast between the silhouetted figure and everything else in the frame. But this is a scene that it would be very difficult, be difficult to get if you're just walking towards this corner. Uh, you see the street and then you just raise your camera to the eye and you just try to make the shot because you have to have figured out a lot of things 
uh, before the moment actually happens. You have to have recognized the potential of the scene in the first place. You have to have recognized the importance of the line and the shapes and the choice to underexpose it by maybe about a stop so that you can change not only the way you position the camera in order to get the frame, but also how you're going to expose it. And then once you've done that, you have to anticipate the moment that someone's going to enter the frame and figure out, again, that issue of timing. When do you photograph the person? And because this person is very close to the camera, um, your opportunity to time it is even less because the closer they are to the camera, the more briskly they'll move through the frame. Uh, if they're further away, like in the previous shot, you know, you have a little bit of more time to try to figure out, okay, when is the exact moment I need to take the photograph? If this person is coming from your left and is about to enter the frame, uh, you have to be that much faster. If you're off because you're preoccupied with a bunch of other things, you're going to miss the moment and you're going to lose it. And uh, this photographer obviously didn't and did, a, and did a great job. Hope that was helpful. If you want to submit images to the Candor Frame Flickr poll, you can do so by going on your computer, going to Flickr and just typing in the Candor Frame and just ask to be added. Uh, don't try and do it on your tablet or your phone. I get emails uh, at least once or twice a week with people telling me that, uh, that they get a message that uh, the, or the group is private and they can't be added. That's just because you're trying to do it through your tablet or your phone. You have to do it via your computer. Unless someone knows what the, what the reason for that is, and can pass it along to me, I, I'd appreciate it, and, and uh, we'll no longer have that, have that problem. So um, if you like what you're seeing here, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, see you next time.